Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. October 6, 2023. Just about 17 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Friday afternoon with markets tumultuous volatility, but right now ripping back to the upside. But hey, look, the whole week we've been talking incessantly about bonds because bond markets they tanked. I mean, it was it was ugly out there. Bond markets tanked. But what we're going to look at here on this weekend's update is we're going to analyze okay, that impact on the major indices, equities. Let's get right to it here in this weekend's update. All right. First of all, I'm going to give you kind of a quick week in review because there's a lot of price action to cover i think that's critically important to understand moving forward first of all today's trade activity <laughs> you look at the uh the chart that's on the screen right now it's the s p futures it doesn't look like much just just to quantify yeah, that's a 40 point move in the s p futures inside of one minute that's non-farm payrolls you love it you love it it's non-farm payrolls nevertheless after being down considerably, touching down to 42.42, we exploded higher. We're 110 S&P points off the bottom. You want some volatility? Look, I don't care whether it's a rally, whether it's a sell-off. It displays, if you will, instability in the broader market. And I wanted to start with that because we keep mentioning, you're like, look, markets, you kind of get they're in oversold conditions. And that doesn't necessarily matter because in oversold conditions, that's where markets can really tank from. But you got to look for that just vicious rip your face off rally. And that's exactly what we're seeing at present time. Nevertheless, okay, what should resonate with you right now is not necessarily just the rip your face off rally. Okay. It's that the bond market, okay, Mm, that's not a rip your face off rally in the bond market. They're still down one point. It just keeps, it's getting worse. It's like a bad nightmare of bonds. Uh, and, and again, this is exactly what we're going to cover here in just a moment. But before I go into that bond market, and obviously I'm already giving you a little bit of an overture, okay, of, uh, of ugliness to what's coming in this marketplace, because that bond market, it's got to recover at some point or it's over for the S&Ps. You know, I had somebody actually ask me like, what, what do you think the risk is in the bonds? Like, I don't know, I, I know one thing, if, uh, if they go to zero, game over, man. But we'll talk about that though in just a moment. So giving you kind of the week in review, one of the things that's really surprising, if you go to the SPX, the mother of all products, obviously we like to cover a lot about expected move because it's all about price activity in the markets throughout the course of this week, okay? We sold off significantly. In fact, even in overnight trade, we technically tagged the lower edge of the expected move. Expected move this week was plus or minus roughly 80 bucks, right? That was our expected move. We tagged it, okay? And ironically, we actually tagged it again this morning. And again, that's in the pre-market. So in the overnight market, the S&Ps really did go down to the lower edge of the expected move. And all of a sudden, boom, okay? We're like halfway home to the upper edge of the expected move. So again, short covering sparks, just this, again, what I term that quintessential rip your face off rally and uh, boom, gamma risk, we're right back, all right? And slightly higher on the week. We're gonna close higher on the week, but let's move away from the SPX for a second and talk about the NASDAQ because uh, NASDAQ you know, saved the day. Tech saves the uh, saves the day. But take a look at auto expected moves here because what is interesting is we literally are on, on it, people, the upper edge of the expected move inside of the QQQ. And I want that one to sit with you for a moment because in the midst of all of this and you're like, it's, it's chaos, man. It's a rip your face off rally. This thing won't. St look, it hit exactly the upper edge of the expected move, I mean, to a T, you're down to almost, what, pennies in there, rounding error, if anything, in this marketplace. All right, so moving Now let's look at some sectors that didn't necessarily fare quite as well. Obviously, as I said moments ago, and we'll talk more about it, as tech has kind of saved the day. Starting to look at some of the financials. The financials will actually finish this week mildly down, right? 
massively unchanged on the week. But the financials, I mean, these things just have been tormented as of late. And again, we're going to come back to that in just a moment. And the financials, I just wanted to give you a feel overall. Obviously, also uh, the energy sector. And the energy sector has come down quite considerably. If you look at this from an auto expected move point of view, people, there is no coming back. I mean, that's a full-fledged two sigma move. We pulled back up a little bit, but we are still outside, okay? The lower edge of the expected move. Energy and financials, okay, are just this lead weight around the neck of the S&Ps throughout the course of the week. And that's exactly why I wanted to cover this because it's the bond markets, okay? They tanked. And that is the greatest impact initially in that bond market being felt heavily inside of the financials. But we're going to go into this in a bit more depth because I think it's critically important. You may hear, okay, some really rough news starting to come out of that financial world. Again, kind of foreshadowing here on what we're going to talk about momentarily. Before I get there, let's loop back to the bonds overall. Okay, bond market tanks, clearly, as I said time and again, it's not about interest rates anymore. And I'll pull up the 10-year. I just want you to see the 10-year goes parabolic, hits almost 4.9%, yada, 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 okay? Doesn't make a difference. And this is where, again, throughout the course of this week, I've heard every pundit come out and look at the interest rates. Look, they can go up to six. Like, it doesn't matter. No one gives a crap about interest rates right now other than, okay, investors and so forth. But when I say that, okay, with all due respect, at this point, it's about price action. It's about price action. And what you have, okay, and again, I just want to drive this point home, okay? Bonds are seeing panic selling. You go, how could you possibly know that? Just take a look at a one day, one minute, okay? A one day, one minute here. And I'm going to show you exactly what panic selling looks like. First of all, here is actually the non-farm payrolls. Non-farm payrolls, we dropped from 111 and four ticks, okay? We got crushed to 109 and 26 ticks. Big, big volume, not an issue. When that happened, all of a sudden, windfall. Look at the size of the trade in here. Like I get, you should have some huge size off of an announcement. You really, you got to zoom in on this. You just get a feel. How many times have you actually seen bonds? Look, you know, eight, 9,000 contracts off a major announcement like non-farm payrolls. Cool, done, whatever. This, unheard of. Okay, just unheard of. You don't have 7,000 contracts in one minute. And it's, uh, again, it's fear and loathing inside of a marketplace. And that's exactly what you need to understand. Okay, just sheer panic selling. Now, the bonds. You're like, it's okay. It's okay. They pulled back up, really, because they're still down one full point. And what you have to understand about this, okay, is it's not about interest rates. And I say it's not about rates. Sure, lots of people are talking about rates, lots of people looking at rates, but it's not about rates, okay? It's about a flush of a marketplace. And when this starts to happen, we're talking about margin calls, but what you really want to start thinking about is unrealized losses in regional banks and brokers, okay? There are tons of risk managers and tons of portfolio managers sitting massively long this bond. Why are they massively long the bond? Because, okay, for the previous umpteen years, let's go, let's go a little, little history lesson over here. As the bonds were rallying for the last like, oh, I don't know, forever, okay? For the last 20 some odd years, as the bonds are actually rallying, their yields keep going lower and lower. So what you do to be able to make money as a bank Okay, is if these bonds are out there, let's just, let's get crazy. Let's talk about interest rates. Let's say the bonds are paying 2%. Okay, you can borrow, right, money, and then you go out and buy bonds and you can make 2%. But even better, people are just going to give you their money, right? That's deposits. They're going to give you the money. And uh, then you're going to go out and buy bonds and you're actually going to make 2%. And that works wonders. You're making 2%, you're making 3%, until, of course, the bonds actually crash and you have incredible, okay, unfathomable, unrealized losses. But you still have to mark to market so you can be in a very serious situation. I'm actually going to make a quick point with uh, unrealized losses here for just a second. When you start to look at specific uh, underlyings, look at stuff like Morgan Stanley, okay, Morgan Stanley, huge, huge down move with the, uh, with the bonds, right? Why? Because look, these banks and brokers, everybody knows what their positions happen to be. Their positions are so significant that uh, everybody knows. So on a year-to-date percentage, Morgan Stanley is only down like you know, 6%. Pull it up for the last like three years, 
look, they're, they're actually doing just fine. Okay. I want to make this clear over five years, they're still up about 85%. Okay. Let's switch it up a little bit. Let's cruise over to bank of America. All right. Who's got risk and who doesn't over the last five years, bank of America is down 8% on a year to date basis. They're down 22%. These are tanking. Okay. If you're seeing something like bank of America and it's tanking with the bond market, evidently they have a position in that. Okay. Moving on. Let's actually move to the regional banks because the regional banks is where we've seen risk kind of bubble up. Regional banks not faring very well throughout the course of this, but we don't hear just yet, okay? Or we haven't heard just yet anybody coming forth and saying, okay, we're done because we've taken $40 billion hit in this last week of trade. Maybe, just maybe they're smart enough to hedge. I don't believe so, but uh, hey, okay? One of the things I think you got to start to uh, look at is some of these unrealized losses, either the banks, the brokers, Okay, they might be coming forth and saying like, look, we're taking phenomenal losses. I will bring up, and again, not to uh, freak anybody out, I will bring up Charles Schwab in this one. Charles Schwab, we all know, okay, had uh, during this uh, precipitous drop back here, we know for a fact that they had uh, over $20 billion of uh, unrealized losses. Stock actually recovered a little bit, but it's right back to the lows. At this point, their unrealized losses, they could be between 30 and $40 billion. Okay, uh, on a market cap, and again, let's, with all due respect, the market cap of that underlying is about, uh, oh, $94 billion. They're going to be just fine, maybe. Um, this is one that, you know, you'll want to continue to watch over there. So I covered a little bit about Morgan Stanley and Schwab and Bank of America, okay, and obviously the regional bank. And speaking of uh, Schwab, on a year-to-date basis, as I said, they're down 37%. Take a look at this over the last five years. They're still technically up. Right, it's Bank of America that actually is uh, a bit concerning, if you will, at this point in time. All right, so you have to understand that yes, okay, they're feeling the brunt of the hit over there initially. Okay, uh, is it over? That's the hardest thing to tell, and and that's the question everybody has is like bonds continue to see panic selling. Is it over? For that, first of all, okay, I look to the bonds themselves and. They haven't recovered. They haven't had that quintessential rip your face off rally. And they're not rallying because every time they rally, there's another bank stepping in and go, oh, you know, thank you for rallying. You're letting me out of my position a little bit. And we keep getting this windfall sell side activity. But I'm going to explore something that maybe you don't necessarily look at on a day-to-day -day basis. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the TLT. I actually built a long position of the TLT, you know, thanks because it's defined risk I got to get back up to uh, to 90 to actually see the light of day in that particular trade. It could happen. But uh, again, I need that just vicious, vicious move to the upside. Meanwhile, what I want you to see initially, okay, just on the surface, look at TLT with me, okay? The volatility one week out, and I'm actually referencing implied volatility, is 23%. Now, I want to compare that over to the spiders. The spiders, the S&P, seven days out. Their volatility is 16.4%. Put your helmet on, people. Whatever's going on in the marketplace, not over. I mean, look, uh, you don't have to listen to me. You have to watch the market. The market's even telling you, you just backed off 10 handles because the cash close is coming. Instability is everywhere. As long as the bonds have destabilized the marketplace, okay, the indices are not safe. This, again, to rip your face off rally, this thing can be sold into, okay, come on Monday. Monday, though, the bond market is closed. It's a banking holiday, right? So bond markets are closed. Equity markets are, of course, open. Electronic bond markets, though, are still going to trade. These bond futures are still going to trade. They're going to be lighter volume out there. Anyway, I wanted to show you that bond volatility because it's, it's downright scary. It really is. And then I'm going to cruise over here to the TLT, and I'm going to make a quick point. Uh, on the TLT, once again, if you actually look at what we term, and I'm going to write it up on the screen, implied volatility percentile, okay, or what's known as rank, we're only at like basically 51% IV rank, which is kind of middle of the road. The point that I'm trying to make is, okay, and it's a really simple one, let's go over to the TLT and let's once again, let's bring up studies. Let's go add study, volatility studies, right, and cruise up to implied vol. So I'm also going to go ahead and just uh, hide any of the equity volume in here. I want you to look purely with me at implied volatility. Forget about price action and the underlying. Okay, and then I also want to go back on a three-year daily. The point that I'm trying to make over here, look, when you see a marketplace bottoming out, and again, what I kind of call panic at the disco, you want to see implied volatility rocket, 
rip it. You want to feel like it's a bottomless pit of despair from which there is absolutely no escape. We're getting there, but we ain't home yet. And it's it's a little bit alarming to say that when you see this kind of sell side activity inside of the bond market. Okay. I think there's probably a tremendous number of weak hands inside of the bond markets that are holding on for dear life. And we haven't necessarily seen them bail yet. I think you just really need to keep that in mind right now is that the bonds, look, people, okay, I, I am not one that is ever going to try to bottom fish a marketplace accurately. I don't think anybody's going to be able to do it inside of the bond market, but I will tell you that the implied volatility in there, it doesn't resonate well with me. It doesn't sit well with me. It's like, oh, volatility is coming up. Yeah, but it's still a little bit of a calm before the storm. Things have got to rage. The volume is raging. I'll give you that. Today, though, didn't do it for me. And the fact that we just couldn't get out of our own freaking way on the bonds today, they still got rocked. Like bonds down a full point. Like, you wonder, what do you, you know, look, I've got bond positions on right now. I don't mind saying, okay, getting systematically dismantled in the bonds. Okay, I'm down a thousand bucks in the bonds today simply because the bonds are down a point. So don't tell me, okay, that, oh, don't worry, the volatility is over. It's not over, okay? Maybe the volatility has just begun. And that's exactly why I wanted to say that bond markets tank. If they continue to tank, all right, stick a fork in the indices because they're going to come off. Now, time out for a second. We looked at bond volatility. We looked at IV rank. Okay, we talked a little bit about unrealized losses. A weekend just like this, you know, one of these banks may come out and start to warn, okay, there's the end of the trading week coming to a theater you, near you right now. It's over, people. And the S&Ps, ironically, yeah, they, they backed off quite a bit there. So moving on from just bond talk, another area, okay, of concern at this point happens to be big hit towards retail. And I'm looking at Costco, not because it's Costco, not because the fact, first of all, Costco is still up 23% year-to-date basis. This is the first time we've seen what I would call an unscathed area. This took a hit. It took a hit and Walmart took an even bigger hit. Walmart seen some sell side activity recently, but uh, this was horrendous earlier today. We rallied back up with the rest of the marketplace. Look, bottom line over here, you just got to watch it. You're going to watch it because what do you have underneath this marketplace? Like, what do you got at this point? Clearly, I just talked about financials. Even if the bonds start to rally back up, okay? Even if the bonds start to rally back up, financials can rally back up. The financials, they've been decimated, right? And I say decimated, uh, I don't take that uh, lightly. The financials are now down almost 4% on a year-to-date basis. You realize the financials are down 4% and the S&Ps are actually still up almost eh, 12, 13%. So the financials took real heat, okay? The energy sector, the energy sector is, hanging on to gains on the year by one and a half percent by winging a prayer. What else you got? You got retail. Okay. Where is retail right now? And retail has done well, better than I would have anticipated. Again, you look at stuff like Walmart still up, you know, 9% of the year. Costco, as I said, just up over 20% on the year. Got to watch these carefully. Everything right now, okay, just keeps getting the legs kicked out of it. You know, just, there's, there's no support to the marketplace, but does there need to be? Because tech has saved the market. Question is for how long? And that is the, the operative thing to really think about. Again, you're even seeing some bond sell side activity in here. Markets are closing. Uh, as I said, I'm kind of, you know, of the feeling somebody may actually come out in the next couple of days and say, we're taking you know, unruly losses in the bond market. And that ripple effect is going to be felt everywhere. At this point, tech, okay, really does feel completely and totally unscathed. I keep using that term, it's unscathed, it's unscathed, because this is the area to me, okay, of infinite opportunity. When you start seeing products like this in the middle of a bond crash, we're breaking out to the upside on Meta, all right? We're ripping back to the upside on Microsoft. And it, it's just, it doesn't, I mean, look, this is about to be, you know, recent highs, not the all-time high, but it's recent high inside of Google. Everywhere you look, okay, tech continues to hold us together. The question is at this point for how long, all right? My eye, yes, is absolutely unequivocally in bonds. 
I am starting to take long positions in bonds. In fact, my positions in bonds, you know, I'll buy bonds at 106. I'll be buying bonds at 105. Look, I'm selling puts in here because I'll buy bonds at these levels. I buy bonds at the 100 level. I'll be buying bonds at the 99 level. Okay. Bring the bonds. I'm your guy to buy them. Nevertheless, it's tech that's going to really resonate with me, right? Until tech starts to come off, this marketplace can be and will remain rather resilient. And of course, everybody's looking for the answer. When is that tech going to come off? Okay. There's a couple of different aspects that could happen here. Number one, I can give you an argument. Bonds continue to sell off. Okay. And the S&Ps just start to spiral out of control. But I can also give you a great argument. The capital starts to rotate back into bonds and the money is coming into bonds. Where is it coming from? It's coming out of tech. Look for some wild and woolly rotations to possibly play out in just okay, this next week of trade that we could see a reversal of fortune where bonds start to rally and the money's coming out of the equity market into bonds where things almost get you know normal again. For example, you look at the S&P 100, there was a high degrees of correlation to the downside, high degrees of correlation to the upside. But again, this marketplace was saved by tech. Last, last aspect to cover each and every week, of course, is the uh, SPX expected move. The SPX expected move this last week, as I was saying, 80 points. Did we finish higher on the week? Yeah, but mildly. The S&Ps were, for the most part, I mean, look, we started the week and again, I really want to zoom into this right here. So 42.88, we finished the week at what? 43.08. So what do you got? Ah, what's 20, 30 points amongst friends? Nothing. Okay. It's, a, it's basically the S&Ps this week were massively unchanged. Evidently though, the, uh, the QQQ, yeah, you got me there. The Q's definitely rallied. As I said, tech just saved, uh, saved the entire week. I guess if you're in the S&Ps or you're long tech, you're just fine. You're in financials, you're in energy. It's uh, it's not so not so good. Big question is, what are we looking at next week? So you get this rip your face off rally. You expect the volatility to collapse in the marketplace. And if you look at the VIX, you're like, oh, yeah, it didn't really collapse. What's the volatility looking like for this next week of trade? So again, Monday, okay, somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Monday is a bond market holiday. All right, push that aside. Let's look seven days out. Okay, seven days out, you're still sitting with a $76 expected move. So even with the rally, everything that happened, everything that transpired, look, we just came off of a week with an $80 expected move. This next week, the bond markets are effectively closed on Monday. doesn't matter. We still have over $76 of expected move. What does it mean? Well, here's what it really means to you. Keep your helmets on, people. This is not exactly like rock back and forth under the uh, under the desk kind of uh, kind of business over here, but if the sell side activity inside of these bonds continue, okay, you could see really a spiraling effect. There are going to be firms, okay, that just very well may not survive some of the sell side activity. The unrealized losses are picking up, but there's also a big part of me right now looking at the bond market and going, oh, this is the the ultimate setup. We start rallying bonds and start selling tech. Why do you think right now, what is my position? Oh, I'm heavily short tech, but I'm also selling puts in the bonds. So if we start to get that ripping, ripping rally in the bonds, okay, I'm positioned beautifully for it. See some sell side in tech. I like it. All right, that's it for this weekend's update. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.